Let's pray as we go to the Lord's table this morning. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, uh, there is no greater hope for anyone than to place their hope in you, their trust and their confidence in you. Jesus, your life, your death, your resurrection, your coming reign give the believer great reason for hope and joy. I pray that in these next few moments, you would be Lord and you would be King, and you would enable us by your grace to see you rightly, and I pray it in Christ's name. Amen. All right, well, now is the time in our service where we remember Christ. We remember the Christ that we just sang about. And to do that, we're going to be using a passage from Revelation chapter 1, and so you'll need your Bible. If you don't actually have a Bible, uh, some men are going to come down the aisles, just raise your hand, and they will get one to you. And if you don't own a Bible, please consider this as our gift to you so that you can begin reading God's Word on your own. Our passage this morning is Revelation chapter 1. We're going to be looking at verses 4 through 6. This is a very important passage. Uh, John is writing to seven churches, and his point in writing to these seven churches is to help them understand that Christ will reign on this earth. It's very important that we have a right understanding of Christ, so John starts the letter by explaining Christ. And so as we read our passage, just take a look at all the things that are mentioned about Christ. We'll make a few notes on those, and then we will remember him by taking the elements. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is, and who was, and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and released us from our sins by his blood, and he has made us to be a kingdom, priests to his God and Father, to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Verse 4 tells us something about Christ, and that is that Christ gives grace and peace. And that he gives it in unison with the Father, and he gives it in unison with the Spirit. So collaboratively, they give grace and peace to the believer. That tells us the first thing we need to know about Christ is grace and peace come from him. Verse 5 tells us three important things about Christ, things that are very impressive, things that we look at and we should marvel at. And the first is that Jesus was the faithful witness. The witness there means the one who gave testimony. And that's a reference to Jesus' earthly ministry and the words that Jesus preached and that he taught. Jesus was careful to tell his disciples in John's account of the gospel that, that my words are not from my own initiative. The words I speak, these words the Father gave to me and I give them to you. So these words had their origin in the Father. So they were right and they were true. They pointed out the situation in the world. They explained God for who he is. And they explained the consequence that man had in front of him because of his sin. And Jesus was faithful to explain that to all that were listening. So Jesus was a faithful witness. We have the clear articulated gospel because Christ was the faithful witness. But verse 5 also tells us that Jesus was the firstborn of the dead. And that's really important for us to understand because we know that Christ died and he raised again from the dead. Our New Testament tells us that the three persons of the triune God had all worked together collaboratively to raise Christ from the dead. And so Christ was raised from the dead. But what this tells us more importantly than anything else is that Christ is the heir of this earth. He's the heir of this world and everything we see. He is the one who will properly inherit this earth. And so he is the one who is coming to rule and reign over that which is rightly his. So we have Christ as the faithful witness. He is the one who preached the true gospel. And we have Christ as the one who is the heir over everything that we see in front of us. And he will rule and reign over it. And then lastly, we see that he's the ruler of the kings of the earth. And so here we see that there is no one person at any place in human history or at any time in human history, in any place in this world, who had any kind of position of authority that was not directly under the rule of Jesus Christ. Think of your favorite world leader, any place in human history, any time in human history, anywhere on this globe. Maybe they didn't submit to the lordship of Christ. They probably didn't. 
but at every day, at every week and month and year of their rule and reign, they were under the control of Jesus Christ. These are impressive realities about Christ. It is pretty impressive to be able to be the faithful witness to God's message. It is pretty impressive to be the one who actually is the heir of all that we see in front of us. And it is pretty impressive to be the ruler over everybody who has come before him. But there's a contrast you see at the back end of verse 5, and this is really important. That same Christ who is all of those impressive things, he is very humble. And we see that at the end of verse 5. To him who loves us and released us from our sins by his blood. This is the way we want to remember Jesus this morning. He is magnificent. He is great. He is going to rule. But look at what he did. Together with all of those attributes of himself, he humbled himself and he came into this world. And he did a work that none of us could do on our own. He actually released us from the penalty of our sin. Christian, Christ came into this world and he lived a perfect life. He lived a holy life. And his purpose in living that holy life was so that he could be an innocent sacrifice and he could die in place of all of those who would put their trust in him. And that is exactly what he did. And so for a few hours on a cross outside of Jerusalem, 2,000 years ago, he bore in his body the sins of everybody who would trust in him. And he faithfully, patiently, quietly, servant-heartedly endured the Father's wrath against each and every one of those so that he could save every single one of those who would put their trust in him. Those who lived before him and looked forward to him, those who were looking right at him, who looked contemporary to him, and those who were to come later, like us, looking back at Christ. He satisfied the Father's wrath. So we want to remember Christ that way. We'll just look briefly at verse 6 as well. He has made us to be a kingdom, priests to his God and Father. If you are a believer in Christ, if you are a follower of Christ, he did not save you into a corner and he did not save you onto an island. He saved you into the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is to be a kingdom, a kingdom that will come and that will rule and reign on this earth with Christ. That is what he did. That's the way we want to remember Christ today. So when the elements come to you, take them and hold them if you are a follower of Jesus Christ. And consider this Christ, as great as he is, as majestic as he is, and as humble as he was to come and die for your sin. And when your heart is ready, take the elements on your own. If you're here today and you are not a follower of Christ, we are glad you were here today. It is our privilege to have you here. Uh, we pray that this would be a blessing and a good time for you. We want you to understand that this is a time for Christians, for people who are living under the lordship of Christ in their life. Now look back at verse 5, the one where we spent most of our time. It's the Christian who has been released from the penalty of their sin. And if you're not a follower of Christ, you haven't been released from the penalty of your sin. And up to this point, the wrath of God is abiding on you. After the service, we'll have somebody standing up here in the corner. Uh, they will be happy to talk with you. They will have a Bible. They can open their Bible and they can show you from God's word how you can put your trust and your confidence in Christ Jesus and be released from the penalty of your sin. But when the elements come to you, just pass them by to the next person and take this time to ponder the person of Jesus Christ. I'll be back in a couple of minutes to close our time in prayer. So men, come and serve us.